Okay. Well, we're going to continue our program in just a moment uh, with Heather Turner, uh, who is joining us to talk about a, um, a common but I find difficult type of data, which is ordinal data. When we have rankings of you know, personal preferences or people winning a race, how do we deal with data like that? And I hope to learn a lot from Heather about what we do. Thank you, Heather. Thanks very much. Yeah, if you want to um, have a look at the slides, they're on Git Pitch on this link. So I'll just leave that up a, a second or two before I switch to them myself. Okay. So yeah, I'm going to be talking about modeling item worth based on rankings. And this work is, um, was motivated by a project uh, with, with Jacob Van Etten, who works in uh, Costa Rica in agricultural development. And we also had help from David Firth and Yanis Cosmitis on the programming and, and statistical methodology. So as David said, I'm talking about rankings. And you can imagine rankings arising in, in sort of various different settings. Um, such as you know, athletes and where they finish in a race or preferences that somebody uh, expresses about a product. Uh, but I'm really thinking about cases where we have lots of these rankings. So if, if we just have a single ranking, well, then that's it. But what do we do when we have lots of rankings? And how do we get the information from that to decide uh, what the worth of each item is? Uh, so a classical way to approach this problem is to uh, work from Luce's axiom. And this uh, states that the probability of choosing one item, say item A, over another item, item B, is unaffected by the other items. So if I say I prefer Coca-Cola to lemonade, that's going to be the same if you just give me the, the choice of those two items, or if you say, well, please rank Coca-Cola, lemonade, and Fanta. You know, it doesn't matter whether Fanta comes first, second, or third. I'm still going to put Coca-Cola before lemonade in my ranking. So it's a reasonable sort of basis, and it turns out that a mathematical consequence of this axiom is that if we have a set of j items, as we've got here, i1, i2, up to ij, then the probability of selecting any particular item j from that set is given by uh, this, this quantity here, where we've got uh, a, a parameter alpha j representing the worth of the selected item, and that's, uh, we've got the ratio of that against the sum of the item worth for all the other items in the set. So that's just for a single choice of one item out of a set of J items. So we can build on that by thinking of a ranking as a, a set of uh, a series of choices. So first we choose the first item out of all the possible items. Uh, then once we've done that, we put that to one side, choose the second out of the remaining items. And so you can see, uh, you know, if you've got sort of, sort of mathematical background that's fairly simple to come up with, with this model where we just take the, the, uh, the product of the uh, probabilities for the individual choices to come up with the probability of a particular ranking. Um, and so this is called the Plackett loose model. It was independently proposed by, by two different guys called Plackett and Luce. Uh, and uh, what I'm presenting today is a package called Plackett loose that can be used to fit this model. So let's look at an example um, using data uh, that was released by Netflix for the Netflix Prize. Uh, they released lots of uh, movie rankings in a competition, and we're just going to look at a small subset here uh, of four rankings of four movies. And there's a little helper function in the, in the Plackett Loose package called read.soc, uh, which reads these uh, rankings from a file in a particular format that, that's used on preflib. So I've, I've got the, uh, the, um, the web address here for, for preflib, which is a library of preference data. So it's various standard data sets uh, that the community uh, have shared to, uh, to work on modeling and so on. So we can read in this data using this read.soc function uh, just directly offline. And uh, the result uh, is as, as shown at the bottom here. So this is just showing the first couple of rows. And each row is a, um, the first column is a frequency. So they're saying we've got 68 of the first type of ranking. Um, and, this, uh, and then we've got the ranks in the column. So the first row says that uh, 68 people rank the second movie first, then the first movie, then the fourth movie, then the third movie. Okay, so this is rankings in the form of orderings where uh, we have the items per rank. 
Uh, what we'd like for our Plug It Loose package is actually to do it the other way around uh, and to give the right rank per item. And you could do this by just sort of putting the items in the column and uh, putting the relevant uh, ranks in the, in the data matrix. Um, but uh, we offer um, a little function called as.rankings to create a, a special rankings object. Uh, and that's what I'm doing here. So I'm just taking out the, sorry, just taking out the um, frequencies for the time being, saying that my data are coming in the form of orderings, so orderings of the items, and creating a rankings object. Um, our read.soc uh, function uh, also collects the names of these items. So here they were just called item one, two, three, four, but we were talking about movies, so um, they're, they're uh, saved in an attribute which we can then add to the rankings object uh, in the underlying, uh, in the column names of the underlying matrix object. But one of the advantages of creating a special type of object is we can have things like uh, print methods. So if we print out the first few rankings, we get a, a fairly sort of user friendly uh, printout. So we can see that the first ranking actually corresponds to Beverly Hills Cop being ranked first then Mean Girls, then Mission Impossible 2, and then the last one sort of gets, gets knocked off, but uh, you, know, it's, you can change the width to see, to see uh, longer ranking and so on. Uh, so now once we've got our data in that format, we can flip, fit the Plackett Loose model. Um, and uh, in this case, it's fairly simple. We just pass our rankings object to the model fitting function Plackett Loose. And now we bring back our frequencies and supply those as weights to the model. Then if we call the, the COEF function, which is a, a method for, for models uh, fitted by Plackett Loose uh, with log equals false argument, we get coefficients of this type. And these are the worth parameters that we had in the model formula uh, a few slides ago. And in particular, they're constrained to sum to one, so they can be directly interpreted as the probability that a particular movie is ranked first. So we can look at these movies and say there's 45, uh, probability of 0.45 that Beverly Hills Cop will be ranked first. Um, at, at this stage, you know, we're just coming up with, with uh, point estimates. If, if we want to do some statistical inference, it's better to work on the log scale. And um, we can, uh, in that case, we set a particular parameter to zero to represent the reference. So in this case, we're setting Mean Girls as the reference movie. Uh, and then um, we've got the log words as the, as the points here. And these intervals are, are uh, based on methodology implemented in QVCalc, which is a package that's been around for a while. And what that allows you to do is estimate um, a similar thing to confidence intervals, but they can be defined for all the items, including the reference item. So for all the items, we can get a 95% comparison interval, and they work as you might expect. So if they overlap, there's no significant difference. If, the, if there's separation, we can say they're significantly different. So in this case, we can say Beverly Hills Cop was significantly preferred over all the other movies, and then Mean Girls, but the other two movies, The Mummy Returns and Mission Impossible 2, they're much of a muchness. There wasn't a significant difference between them. So that's the standard Plackett Loose model, um, and it deals with um, strict, complete rankings. So, what do I mean by that is that there's no ties in the data, there's a strict ordering, and all of the items that we're considering are, um, appear in every ranking. But in other applications, we, we might uh, get ties. Um, that's quite common, of course, in, in, in races and other applications. And we can have two different types of incomplete rankings. So we might only present a certain subset of items to a person and ask them their preference over that. Um, or we might have uh, you know, a large number of items and it's unrealistic to uh, ask people to rank them all. So we say, just give us your top five or your top 10. And uh, Plackett Loose can, can handle both of these. Uh, in particular, it, ha it implements a generalized model which will, will handle ties. Uh, the mathematics gets a little bit, a little bit more complicated, but um, the, the, you can see that the structure is the same. So now instead of individual items in our ranking, we've got sets. So these objects, these sets, C1, C2, might be an individual item or they might be two items. And if it's more than one item, 
we're saying that those items are tied. That there's a, if it's preference data, there's no preference between those items. Uh, and then we, we work that through in our model. So now instead of having a, an individual worth, um, we have a, a function of the items in the set. So if we think of our, our model as a product of the probabilities of each choice, then on the top we've got a function of the set that's chosen, and that's um, given by this expression at the bottom here. So if we've got two items in a set, we multiply their worth and uh, take, take the root uh, according to the number of items that are in the set. And uh, there's a new parameter that comes in here, uh, the delta parameter, um, and that's related to uh, how often we see ties of this order. And we only consider up to the maximum uh, order that we see. So if we only ever see ties of two items, we, we only consider the possibility of having two items. And that becomes important when we have to think about all the other possible choices we could have made, um, because what this, this sort of complicated summation is doing there is it's saying, you know, or we could have chosen any other individual item, or we could have chosen any other pair. We have to have all the different combinations of the pairs or the triples, or up, up to whatever order of ties we want to consider. Uh, another problem that can happen in, in using the Plackett model in, in sort of real applications is that the underlying network of in wins and losses implied by the ranking uh, can uh, not be sufficiently connected so that we can't estimate the maximum likelihood. So here's a couple of cases where that happens. So in this uh, network diagram, uh, a double-headed arrow means that there are cases where A wins against B, and when B wins against A. But in terms of uh, D, we only ever observe D to lose. And so if we think about the log worth, uh, there's no bound on, on how low that can go. So the maximum likelihood estimate is actually negative infinity and is um, not particularly useful. Uh, in other cases, we can have completely disconnected um, networks. So we'll have some comparisons between one set of objects, say D and E here, and other comparisons between another set of objects, A, B, and C. And we can compare within those clusters, but we have no idea how those two clusters uh, relate to each other uh, in terms of their relative worth. And uh, the Plackett Loose package deals with that by implement, uh, introducing a ghost item, G, uh, and adding pseudo rankings to the data um, where each item wins and loses against this ghost item. And that means the network is always connected and the maximum likelihood estimate is always estimable. And this can be viewed as a, as, as a sort of Bayesian, a simple sort of Bayesian analys analysis where uh, our prior is that all the items have equal worth. And the more pseudo rankings we add, the stronger that prior will be. And the default um, is actually to use uh, Half, is half a pseudo ranking, so it, we don't even have to use a whole number because if you remember, our frequencies appear in the model just as a weight, so there's no reason why that has to be an integer. So we always use a small amount, and even if the network is connected, this has a ben beneficial effect in, ter in terms of having a shrinking effect and, and reducing the bias of our estimates. Um, and then a final issue, or I'm sure there are other issues, but the last issue I, I'm going to talk about is the issue of heterogeneity. So, so far we've just assumed there's sort of one true ranking, an item has, has one single worth. But in fact, the worth of an item might, might depend on, on the conditions, for example, um, characteristics of the judge that, that is making the ranking. Uh, and Plackett Loose works with uh, party kits package uh, in order to do uh, model-based uh, recursive partitioning, in other words, to create a, a Plackett loose tree. So how this works is, first of all, it, it fits a Plackett loose model to the whole data, and then it tests the stability of those, those worth parameters with, with respect to some covariates. So if we've got um, some covariates about the, work, the, uh, the rankings, for example, um, you know, the gender of the person that, that, was, that was expressing the preference, um, then we can see if the, if, if the worth is stable across, across the values of that co covariate. And if there's significant instability, uh, we can split the data, uh, just a binary split um, along that covariate. And we just carry on doing that until there's no, no significant instability anymore. 
And, and this was uh, actually the case in our motivating example, which was a, a citizen science trial of bean varieties in Nicaragua. Uh, so in this uh, study, there were 11 bean varieties, but each farmer was only asked to grow three. They were asked which was the best and which was the worst, so this implies a ranking of three. And they were also asked to compare each variety to the local variety. So there's also these pairwise comparisons. Uh, and alongside that, we have covariates on the growing conditions. And the full study had, had a, a larger number of covariates, but we're just going to look at three, uh, the growing season, the year, and the maximum light temperature. Uh, so it takes a bit of work to, to organize the data, and we've got uh, uh, th this work through on the, on the beans help page. Um, but just to sort of sum give an idea of what, of what goes on, uh, in the original data, we have it organized uh, in, in, in 842 rows, which was the number of farms. Uh, and so for each farm, we have one three-way ranking and three two-way rankings. And these are collected together in uh, one complete rankings object for all possible varieties. So there's 11 uh, varieties, and at the top here in the, f in the first ranking, we've, we've got the, a, a three-way ranking, and at the bottom, we've got the two-way rankings. But we need to relate that um, to our covariate somehow, and so we, need, we have another structure in the package called grouped rankings, uh, which relates these, these rankings uh, with a, a variable or a factor that's indicating which farm those rankings correspond to. So now if we, if we print that, instead of having a single ranking uh, in, each, in each element, here we've got uh, the three-way ranking, the first two-way ranking, and there'd be two more pairwise rankings uh, in, in that element of the data. Uh, then we can pass this uh, to our function PL tree to fit the placket loose tree. Um, and uh, we, we specify some conditions about what how far we should go with the tree. And, and this is the result. So uh, what we found was that uh, the first split was according to the maximum ni nighttime temperature. Um, so there was, uh, um, if, if there was a particularly high nighttime temperature, there was a slightly different preference uh, of the varieties. So varieties uh, two and three and, and eight were the most popular. Um, then at the lower nighttime temperatures, for most seasons, uh, varieties eight and nine were pre preferred. But in one particular season, um, Primera 2016, uh, variety seven and nine were the most popular. So this is useful information because it shows, uh, you know, not not just which varieties the farmers preferred, but how that relates to the con the conditions that the farms are trying to grow the varieties in, and then that can influence what, what varieties are, are taken on. So you're not necessarily taking on the variety that's, uh, that's best overall, um, but uh, you have some information about what varieties you can recommend to particular farmers. So that's um, a sort of overview of, what, of the, what the package can do, and we have a few ideas of, of further work we'd like to uh, to do, and we already have plans. Uh, uh, there's an MSc student that's going to be looking at incorporating spatial effects, and I hope to be looking later in the year at incorporating uh, genotype information. Uh, Placket Loose is on Crown and GitHub, and there's even more detail in the vignettes if you'd like to follow up. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. That was outstanding. We have time for uh, one quick question. If anybody from the audience has a question for Heather. Anybody out there? I have a question, though. Oh. Um, I, I, I wasn't sure if you touched in your talk, but what about the situations where there are only partial rankings? Like, if, for example, Netflix asked everybody to rank their top five movies, would yeah. you be able to use that to get an overall ranking of all movies? So um, it's, it's doable with the Placket Loose package, but at the moment we don't support those sort of top top end type rankings. So in the, in the example I presented, we had the case where farmers were only presented with a subset of uh, varieties. They only um, asked to rank three at a time out of a possible 11. Um, but we haven't had the case where people have had to consider all, um, you know, all movies they've ever seen and, and select their, their top 10, for example. Yeah. Thanks, that's very interesting. Thanks, thank Heather once again. <clears throat>